Welcome to the vignette Meta-Analytic Models. The Meta-Analytic Model combines the effect sizes of a sample of studies quantitatively. Common questions we might want to answer with such a model might be what is the average true effect size, what effect do moderator variables have, and how much of the sample variability is accounted for. Here we will explain what a typical meta-analytic model consists of. First of all, the effect sizes found in an individual study go into the model as dependent variables. For each effect size, we assume a random measurement error component that makes individual effect sizes deviate from the true mean. What I just showed is an illustration of a fixed effects model. You saw that the true effects of each study are fixed, and the only source of effect size variation is a random error. Fixed effects models only estimate one true effect. In contrast, random effects models allow true effects to vary. Effect size varies based not only on random errors, but also on true variation between studies. Here, our meta-analysis does not estimate one true effect, but the average of a distribution of true effects. We most commonly use random effects models in meta-analysis. They more easily allow for generalization to a population of studies, for which we often cannot assume that there is no variation between true effects. Here is a visualization of the difference between the models. In random effects models, study-specific random effects and random error both contribute to the deviation of the effect measured in a specific study from the mean. The two types of models can be implemented with the metaphor package in R using these formulae. A third element going into a meta-analysis is the weighting of effect sizes. The basic idea is to weight studies more that have higher precision due to larger sample size and or smaller variance. Inverse variance weighting, thus taking the inverse of effect size variance, is often used for this purpose. In a fixed effect model, weighting takes into account the variance within each study, while it takes into account within and between study variance in a random effects model. Note that the calculation of effect size variance for within subject studies with two data points requires knowledge of the correlation between these two measures. We have now added effect size weighting to our model. After having our base model set up, we can include moderator variables. Now, our model is a mixed effect model. We can explore what amount of study heterogeneity, that means variance, the moderators explain, and how adding moderators affects the estimate of the average true effect. We have now color-coded effect sizes based on a hypothetical moderator variable. A final consideration is that some studies might be more similar than others. For instance, studies conducted in one lab or studies stemming from the same paper. We can account for this by hierarchically grouping random effects. Zooming into a few effect sizes, we can see that this would lead to the addition of random effects that are shared within a specific group, for instance, effect sizes stemming from the same paper. Congratulations! You now have a meta-analytic model.